Okay, hey everybody, uh, this is Brett, and we're going to get started here in a moment. We're still letting people in, so I'm going to hop over here. Let's see, where did my other screen go with the charts? I am uh, out of the office here today, and so just um, doing this remotely, but uh, lots to cover, so let's kind of dive in. Welcome, everybody, and we're going to start out with some news. Got my Bitcoin hat on here. I got a new, you can buy these on Amazon. This is uh, uh, I think I like that better than that big white bee. What do you guys think? So um, I'm going to cover some news. You know, I, I think really want to dive into the charts mostly and uh, show you what I'm I'm seeing and what I think is going to happen. And certainly if you guys have any questions, uh, go ahead and put that in the chat and I'll get to that as soon as I can. Hopefully you can hear me okay. I uh, want a different setup. I'm working remote. And um, yeah, so basically lots happening, a uh, little bit of nothing, but I think we're setting up for a really big push higher. And that's really interesting, the varying uh, opinions on what's going to happen here. So why don't we unpack the news? We'll get to the charts because, as I always say, show me the charts and I'll tell you the news. But here we have some uh, news about the SEC, including the uh, cryptocurrency uh, in the top priorities for 2025. And uh, I'm not necessarily in a good way, though, because there's some talk that um, I'm not sure if it's this article or another one. But um, I think it was a different one. But some some more talk about like putting the reins on crypto, and uh, you know I think it's past that point. But we might see uh, kind of also depending on what happens in the next three weeks or so with the White House election here in the U.S. I'm not going to get into politics uh, necessarily, but let's let's dive into this. So SEC uh, basically saying they've officially added cryptocurrency to its list of items to examine for 2025, and that doesn't sound uh, too fun for us, does it? Uh, you know, and I think a lot of that's gonna come down to who is heading the SEC in the next um, election cycle. So if we have a new regime come in and that replaces Gary Gensler, which of course Donald Trump had uh, proposed and promised to do on day one, if he is elected, that would ease a lot of the, uh, essentially the war on crypto. Um, you know, some are saying that, um, and I think there's some truth to all angles. The markets don't like uncertainty. So either way, we'll have certainty, uh, uh, let's let's hope. We'll have some degree of certainty after the election. Uh, I think it's going to be hotly contested unless it's a landslide. Uh, and um, I think we should prepare for some volatility. But uh, either way, once we have certainty on the next president, then markets will settle down. And I think because we're in a liquidity cycle, we'll see things go higher, but for how long? You know, I'm very bullish on the last quarter of this year going into the end of December. Uh, I'm less certain what happens after that. Uh, do we see increased regulatory uh, pressure here? Like this article is suggesting, you know, and if uh, if the Democratic Party stays in control and, and Gary Gensler maybe stays at the helm, Certainly, it's no uh, surprise, no secret that he has been on the warpath against crypto and who's pulling his strings. We don't really know, but uh, that that's not favorable for us. So uh, currently, the polls and the betting markets are are favoring a Trump victory, and that would be most beneficial for crypto because RFK is on the cabinet. We've got Senator Loomis, who's very pro Bitcoin. We've got Senator Senator Tim Scott potentially as the next Treasury Secretary, which is what was alluded to at the Bitcoin conference, I was very impressed with uh, him. And of course, I'm a big fan of Cynthia Loomis. Cynthia Loomis. So uh, that's my hope. And, um, you know, we kind of can blow off the black cloud that's been uh, a storm that's been raining and lightning on Bitcoin and crypto for the last four years and longer. So um, let's just unpack this a bit. The SEC officially uh, adding crypto to its list of items. You know, again, as we said, uh, the you know it's worth noting here that the former SEC chairman, whose name escapes me, has come out publicly and saying I don't know why they're on the warpath against crypto. This may be you know Elizabeth Warren's uh, doing somewhere in in the background because she's very anti crypto, uh, and uh, you know these are very uh, real and uh, meaningful discussions, and we need to see what happens because uh, they they can pull those strings so. Um, yeah, so basically in here in a recent document, the SEC outlines its plans to uh, to monitor the crypto markets. Certainly they have been uh, doing a lot of um, heavy handed monitoring and regulating through enforcement or enforcing through re regulating through enforcement. Right. So 
you know, we we really need to and like to see that to ease off a bit. I, I think there's some value to that, of course, and regulating these markets. The offshore markets really needed regulation. The FTX scandal was probably somewhat necessary and to some degree was the sacrificial lamb needed to really wake up everybody that, hey, these unregulated markets are dangerous. In my personal opinion, there's still a lot of this and it is still the Wild West uh, with these uh, overseas high margin trading um, uh, companies like Bit, uh, Bit by, uh, by Bit. They all sound the same after a while, by Bit. Uh, bit get um you know uh, there a bit and so the list goes on and on and these are you know many are unregulated they're out of singapore or asia where gambling is uh, very much part of the culture um but uh but they're very uh high they're manipulated markets and so i think that uh, some level of of regulation is positive the key word positive and clear we need clear regulation Coinbase has repeatedly been asking the SEC, we're going a lot down a little bit of a rabbit hole here, but it's important, asking the SEC repeatedly for some clear regulation, and they have purposely made it unclear so they could uh, sort of uh, regulate and um, through, uh, um, uh, what's the word? So regulate through uh, uh, enforcement, right? So so we've seen a lot of that. I, th I think we're still, we're in the Wild West stages, but we've got a new sheriff hopefully coming into town and we can clear up some of those things. So, um, so moving forward though, maybe lifting, taking the foot off of the proverbial neck of crypto. And if you can imagine uh, old Gary Gensler standing there with his feeble, uh, <laughs> stepping on the neck of uh, a beast that's, that's, you know, Victor Hugo saying that there's nothing like uh, the, an idea whose time has come, right? Nothing as powerful as an idea whose time has come. And clearly that is crypto and Bitcoin. So we need to get the neck of the SEC, uh, the foot of the SEC off of crypto's neck. And um, so I think that's important to keep in mind and, and why I think there's a lot of uncertainty right now. And um, uh, so let's move on. But but the betting markets and poly market have, uh, and, and actually before I say this, worth noting that uh, the gambler mentality, um, well, actually, I have a new opinion on this. So poly market is taking bets on who the next president's going to be. It's it's heavily, it's 60-40 Trump victory over Kamala Harris. Uh, the What I was going to say is that the gambling mindset is probably more of a, you know, um, risk taker, Republican, conservative uh, type uh, of um, uh, candidate. So it's probably skewed. However, what I'm hearing recently is that a lot of the betting market is from Asia, and they're certainly more pro uh, betting and gambling. So I, I think that it's going to be closer than people think based on that, and that's where the uncertainty comes from. Okay. Once we have some certainty, I think that uh, certainly if the Republicans get into office, uh, it'll be a very pro, uh, very positive environment for crypto and risk on assets. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll have to see what happens, but um, it, with the SEC still breathing down the proverbial neck of these markets, mm -hmm. we have to be aware that it could go either way. And uh, where there's risk, uh, you know, the people will hedge and, and stay out of the markets. So anyway, with a focus on investments involving digital assets and related investment vehicles, uh, so that's no surprise there. Let's see, I'm going to skim this. I want to try to get to the charts pretty quick. So we're only going to do a little bit of news. And um, let's see, uh, all right, lots of ads, uh, crypto exam priorities. So this person here, I'm not familiar with Eleanor Trarit, but uh, a, a year on the SEC uh, uh, gov includes crypto in its list of 2025 exam priorities, despite no major crypto participants having registered with the commission in 2024, uh, AKA more regulation likely coming. Uh, the only crypto assets I can think of SEC has interacted with in a regulatory role, not enforcement. I believe this is Coinbase, but uh, it's making me open up a new article. It appears on Twitter. So while we're down the rabbit hole we go. Uh, let's see, what is he, what are they suggesting? Uh, they, okay, so they're saying uh, the BTC and ETH ETFs. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole uh, because it's a big one. And, um, you know, so they, the regulations, the FCC, you know, we really need a new sheriff in town, I think, on that. And, uh, you know, Donald Trump did say at the Nashville Bitcoin conference 
that uh, he day one would also fire Gary Gensler. And there was a huge, huge, massive uproar uh, from obviously a very uh, pro Bitcoin and crypto crowd. And uh, so much so that he said that again. And, and um, you know, that uh, would be very positive, I, I believe, for our industry, our nascent industry. So, um, you know, let's see. And here, I haven't read this article yet. So kind of on the same page, crypto crackdown, get but Gensler out. Well, what does this mean? Uh, I mean, they're sort of grooming uh, Gensler to be one of the um, higher end, uh, um, you know, regulatory goons over there, as I understand. But let's just see, uh, current head of commissioner may leave his post. I mean, he he's apparently the, the financial puppet of Jan Janet Yellen. Sorry, I'm not trying to put my conservative um, uh, conspiracy hat on. I'm just trying to sort of get us closer to where the truth may lie. So let's see. Five-year term for the FCC does not expire until Jan 2026. There's a tradition of leadership changes after U.S. election that will place in uh, November. And, you know, I mean, we would hope to have, no matter what, somebody more favorable on the crypto and Bitcoin side. And let's see and have some meaningful, clear regulation and rules that companies that Coinbase can play within. They've been trying. They've been having multiple meetings, being proactive with the SEC and asking, say, what do we need to do? And the SEC is not telling them. They're, they're enforcing through regulation, regulating through enforcement. So uh, let's see. I have some sentence dyslexia there. Despite the potential change, SEC focus on crypto industry remains clear, signaling a continued push towards more oversight and regulation, which is not what we want. And uh, and so I think that that's kind of all as much as I, this I want to unpack. And XRP, I'm not going to get into. I think XRP that is sort of a tired narrative. They have a, a, a huge lead internationally, but they just it's such a high float crypto, and it's not decentralized that it's uh, not catching the attention of the big investors in crypto. So I don't know. I think XRP one day, um, you know, I, I'd like to see it get to a dollar, and before I pay attention to it, I think they have a lot of headwinds. So they get there. So uh, moving right along, Bitcoin analyst sees lower risk aversion as retail demand adds 13%. So we have that, the transaction volume hinting that retail interest slowly returning. You know, we do want retail back in this markets um, if for no other reason, well, for different reasons than the institutions and hedge funds and whales who see retail, which is you and I and the small investors as, la as uh, liquidity for them to sell. And so we, it's a game of musical chairs, as we know, we need more participants to sell into. And uh, we'll look at the charts on that and give some ideas on where I think things are headed. So transaction volume hinting at retail interest slowly returning in line. So the key is slowly returning. You know, we really need mass interest from retail and globally and new participants really to come in to help, uh, you know, the rising tide lifts all boats. All the big boats, uh, the big boats are, and yachts are sitting here waiting for the rising tide. Uh, that's going to come from both retail buying Bitcoin, but also flowing into the ETFs and future derivatives. I did recently post that uh, they have now approved, um, and it's escaping me, a new sort of an instrument that will bring more retail money in uh, to these uh, markets. And also there's an advantage, a financial advantage from big companies to invest in the ETFs kind of with the way things are taxed. I don't want to get into that today. Uh, we might unpack that next week or in our M3 class tomorrow. And uh, at any rate, let's just kind of, I want to keep it kind of high level so you can put the frame around the information we're going to dive into. And uh, so Bimic, uh, Bitcoin retail activity mimicking the Bitcoin price run to all-time highs after months of stalemate. Uh, it's not stalemate. It's it's classic bull flag pattern that we're now breaking Breaking above, so this is worth noting. Bitcoin small investors show signs of life. You know, we need the guppies and the minnows and all of the other smaller players to kind of come up and the bigger players as well. So let's see. Um, and I do have some other metrics and new resource for these uh, that I shared with the M3 Active Trader Group uh, in that chat that I may share one or two of here in a new dashboard that I built. But uh, let's see, what else is here? Coinbase premium lags, nothing really want to dive into so much there. I think that is good enough for that news article. 
And so let's see, BinanceCrypto.com, lose ground arrivals, DEX is on the rise. This is worth noting. So the DEXs are going to be your Uniswaps and like a DYDUX. There's a number of these. And certainly that may be our last bastion of hope if the SEC is able to regulate these centralized companies such as Coinbase and Binance and Gemini if they regulate them out of business. And you know, it's worth noting that, that the SEC has oversight on these companies that have a central organization. The DEXs, the D, so the centralized exchanges, are not owned by anybody. They're not centralized. They can't really go after them. And uh, and I think that uh, in that and that's we're going to see more of that. So we're seeing this article talking about that. Binance is falling market share. Um, by the way, I did see today that CZ, who is still in jail, is still um, earning, I think, $20 million a day, uh, some crazy number because of his ownership in Binance. But um, uh, anyway, uh, Dex is starting to pull some money away from them because, you know, if you're in the U.S., you can't trade on Binance, you can't use margin. So these decentralized exchanges are essentially kind of getting around the rules there a little bit. Uh, like MEXC is another one that we've been talking about lately. And uh, I have actually a uh, an account with. So um, small account, but, uh, you know, I've got a few others. So but anyway, point being... There are other options out there. The decentralized exchanges are the ways that you can still trade and potentially use margin, uh, which is not something we recommend, but some of you, I'd like to dabble in that, I know. Okay, um, talking about uh, other things here, let's see, high profile. I don't want to get too far into this. Uh, DEX is on the rise. That's the TLDR. And C CEX is centralized exchanges. That's the Bitcoin, Coinbase's, and, uh, and um, Gemini's of the world. So their volumes are still dominant. So we can see that so the largest being Binance and some of the other ones like Bybit, BitGet, MEXC, like I mentioned, Crypto.com, Gate.io. There you have it. Nice little graphic. So uh, a lot of that uh, from Asia, of course. And let's go on. One more news article. And then uh, maybe uh, if you guys have anything you want to look at, we'll check that out. BlackRock, IBIT investors, a whole bunch of money came in last week. And so it's uh, it's not pushing prices higher. And so, um, it, you know, there's other ways that this happens into, so the iBit goes into the BlackRock ETF, you know, maybe they're buying on over the counter, you know, but uh, we are seeing an expected pullback, nothing unexpected. We, I'll show you the chart we've been following for weeks, which I think is setting us up for a massive bounce to new all-time highs, at least to retest the old highs at 70K to 72K, then a pullback into that November 5th area. We did just have our Market Cycle Secrets class of the month today with Juan Villaverde. Uh, it's excellent. And uh, he's been very good at showing these, um, uh, these estimated lows and highs. So incidentally, or coincidentally rather, November 5th is not only the US election day, but is the next weekly cycle low projected. So what I think is going to happen, I'll show you, is I think we're in a bit of a pullback. I think we're going to push up for a while to sort of get closer to the 70K region and then pull back down into a support area and uh, around November 5th. And then I think we shoot up higher into uh, test new all-time all highs and effectively potentially breaking above that and triggering a big short squeeze. That's my thoughts. We'll see. I know there's some shorts out there that think we go to 40k. I don't think so. Uh, I it would take it would take some um, pretty serious uncertainty, global war breaking out. Uh, you know, Kim Jong Un, of course, is now throwing threats of uh, uh, using nukes if it's South Korea. But it's just, it's a big staring contest. It's a big um, I won't use an off color term, but a, a big swinging contest of person part of the male anatomy. Uh, you know, they're they're, they're doing one of these. Um, um, you know, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. So let's see, BlackRock funded the Bitcoin fund carried over the rest of the United States spot Bitcoin ETFs recorded net inflows. Um, so we had some nice inflows. This is a bit older article, it seems like. Well, it's 11 hours ago. This is quoting October 21st, uh, which actually was yesterday. I, for some reason, I was thinking that's last month. It's all blurring together, isn't it? Yeah, we had a huge inflow last week into the BlackRock ETF. Didn't move price higher yet, but they're probably buying on the OTC market. And so, you know, we have the, the support to really push up 
higher here in the near term. All right, let's unpack this a bit. Investors in BlackRock shares, I, I bit, I trust. Uh, the IBIT, rather, is um, bought the dip, sending 329 million in inflows. So we're seeing a solid buying throughout here on the um, on the IBIT from last week. Inflows continuing, so this is good. Flows for the US spot Bitcoin ETFs, of course. And we just need to kind of see this sell pressure ease a bit come into that cycle low. And then I think we're really gonna see some fireworks. So that's why things are kind of going lower here. Uh, we're in a bit of a pullback zone into where we do see some buyers lining up by the way. So that's all really good. And this person saying market's selling off slightly. I, I had forecast last week, you guys, we'd see a pullback, which we are seeing. And that is a pullback into a buy support zone. That's what I'll show you using our, and of course this is our crypto mastery class. We're going to showcase how to use those crypto mastery indicators, namely the buy block, which we see right below here. So we just need to come down in that range, and I think we're going to pop up, shoot out of it. All right. Well, actually, that's a good segue. Uh, let's see. Uh oh, we'll see. Bitcoin ETFs make Coinbase a honeypot for hackers and governments. Um, you know, I was just ready to get off of the news, but maybe we should look at that just in case there's something important that we need to know about. All right, so let's see what this is all about. Um, you know, Coinbase as a target for hackers, I would imagine they have the best security, cybersecurity there is. And, but according to Trezor, who is a competitor, so we have to kind of discount this news a little bit. Um, supply, huge market for Trezor, huge disturbances in the force. Uh, at least not the recent approval of Bitcoin exchange traded funds. What is this getting at here? Here. Ultimate aim for everyone holding Bitcoin should be self-custody. This must be a sponsored article by uh, Trezor. I, I'm not discounting the importance, but um, I don't think that Coinbase is a is hackable. Uh, I, I mean, you know, have to, if you have if you own a lot of crypto and Bitcoin, I would certainly keep some on a cold storage wallet like a Trezor or one of the others. Um, however, this is a bit of sensationalism here, trying to scare people that Bitcoin or Coinbase is not secure. I would imagine they have the best uh, cybersecurity out there. Uh, let's see. He issues. I wonder who he is. He probably works for Trezor and, um, and is saying stern warning in the quantum is Coinbase, which were eight of those 10 ETFs reside. So the ETFs are in Coinbase. Interesting. Uh, so many assets are correlated to one place. There's always a, a threat of hacking and worse state intervention. Um, I mean, you can't roll these things out. I wouldn't get my uh, get my worry hat on just yet. But all right, well, this is valid to know. You know, with the current the major inflow of cryptocurrency into the spot ETFs, Coinbase as the custodian of these ETFs, eight of those. So this is worth noting. We're trying to put the frame around all the information so that Coinbase is going likely to become one of the largest Bitcoin honeypots, hot honeypots for hackers. Honey pots for hackers. All right, say that three times fast. So meaning that it's a huge bullseye for these hackers, many of which are these nation states. And um, there, I shouldn't say many because there's not that many, but North Korea, Russia, China, they're all probably, I mean, in their minds and in communist mentality, it's all fair game. So Coinbase, the largest honeypot attracting hackers, social engineers, and other attackers in volumes never seen before. Um, you know, you guys, this is this is definitely something worth as 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 to acknowledge. And as a PSA announcement, you should never have all of your coins in one place for that reason. So anyway, these bad actors may not be highest risk in any case. Major threat comes from governments that may be tempted to confiscate this Bitcoin at uh, stored at Coinbase in or uh, in whole or in part, such as through specific taxes or simply by legislating or confiscating. Yeah, you know, um, we are still in the wild, wild west, you guys. I think it's worth noting that if this sounds like the CEO of a self-custody company sounding false alarm, it's not because that's happened before. All right. I mean, look, uh, this is, uh, I think it's worth noting all this, certainly, and maybe keeping some of your crypto under the mattress <laughs> or or like just selling most of it as this bull run comes to an end, which is what we're kind of talking about here. And we are very actively monitoring uh, when that will be in our M3 active trader classes and our retire rich classes. So 
uh, well, you you guys will know first. So uh, when our red alert signals happen, but Franklin D. Roosevelt uh, did his, in his executive order, that's back on something about gold, I believe. <clears throat> Yeah, when they, they they confiscated the gold, you know, I think nowadays though that would really not go over well, um, and and would not. I think we'd have civil war if that tried to happen. So anyway, uh, let's let's talk less about that. Let's say less, right? So I've, I've covered that topic. You guys are all your own um, uh, sovereign people, and so you know, self custodying is, you know, it's a fair quote here. And then we'll move on to the charts. Without self custody, which means you hold it on your hardware wallet, that they are missing out a big part about mates. What makes Bitcoin special? The fact that you can self custody your own coins and nobody can take it away from you. So I think that's uh, certainly worth doing and having some of it uh, your long term holdings on your uh, your wallet, whether it's Trezor or one of the other ones. Decentralization, real ownership. That's the power of this whole network. Okay, it's on a, a mission to make everyone aware of self custody. There we go. All right, uh, that is about see Doco about to collapse, and that's enough. That's enough of that. So let's let's keep going. Let me jump over here to the charts. Any questions, you guys? I will jump over to the chat briefly. And June says I get phone calls daily. Uh, yeah, yeah. Be aware of these phishing scams. Someone trying to change your phone number on Coinbase. Um, you know, if you don't, here's, here's a pro tip. If you don't know who the phone caller is, don't even answer it. Let it go to voicemail and you can always call them back. And if it goes somewhere, it doesn't answer, just block that number. There's a lot of phishing scams. So, uh, hi, Maria says, says, hi, Brett. Thanks for your session. You're welcome. Welcome. And, uh, well, to the class, Terry says, would you please explain how to interpret the RSA pro in between the red and green dots? I uh, I would be happy to. I'm not sure I can. <laughs> the the RSI Pro, we might have to get uh, Joe on here one of these days. Uh, but the good news is you don't really need to. We will get to that. And in fact, why don't we dive into that right now? Because as you can see, I have this nice chart here, handy here, chart of Bitcoin. Um, but uh, just showing you this, I have redrawn these lines a few times here. And, uh, you know, which is okay to do. So it looks like, new, you know, new information equals new decision. I'm going to lower this line here and bring it up, which I have done on another chart. So really we could make an argument that this is the resistance here we're pulling back from. And this green area is our buy block indicator. What does that mean? These are actual limit buy orders on the exchanges. And this is the aggregate. So this is the Bitcoin index. There are other versions. If you pull up a Bitcoin chart on Coinbase or Gemini, it's going to show the orders on those order books. Okay. So, but here's what I think. And I've been saying this for days and we pushed up here and like, you know, like a good old fashioned Chinese weather balloon lingering up in the sky for long enough, you know, we're going to have something to kind of, kind of try to pull it back down or shoot it out of the sky. I don't know. I'm still working on that analogy, but I think you know what I mean. So it came up to resistance, pulled back sharply yesterday, dropping down below. We have this buy block. I do think we'll see a 65.5 Bitcoin again and maybe down into 64K, even down here on the lower range of this uptrending channel. And then we get a bounce. And I think we bounce up here. I have another chart that maybe shows this a little bit better uh, in terms of timing, which I'll pull up, but it pulls back down in and around this uh, November 5th cycle over here. So I think we bounce, we push up, kind of break 70K where there's a lot of sell pressure. And let's take a look at that on, on another one of the exchanges. So bear with me here, but certainly at a higher level and on the total market cap here. So on Bitstamp, we can see a lot of sell orders. But at that all, all time high area, uh, we did go higher originally 72, 73,000, but there's a lot of sellers right in here. Why would they line up here? because they all got fooled into buying it because the breakout was here. So there were a lot of sellers just trying to get back to even and probably some short sellers in there as well. So I do think we break up above that, maybe get a bit of a short squeeze and then we pull back down into that uh, November 5th area, which is both the election and a, uh, a cycle low on the uh, cycle timing area. So what I do want to call to your attention to, and then we'll get to the RSI, is this uh, TSI. So we're seeing the red rolling over 
So we do are, are looking for a pullback here. And since it was very high on the extreme level, probably will cycle down, you know, most of the way. So the pullback here, probably going to last a few days, go a little bit deeper and then start to bottom out. And I'll be looking for a reversal in here, right around that November 5th area, because again, our cycle lows, uh, if you're not in our market cycle secrets course, it's excellent. Juan did an excellent job today describing everything and forecasting what he thinks happens next. So you can reach out if you'd like more information about that. We did close that class and we might be reopening that soon. But on this lower trend line, on this trend strength indicator, I would expect this to come down and bounce a bit off of this and uh, then bouncing out and breaking up to you all time highs. I think that's what happens. So in terms of that aligning with the uh, the RSI Pro, so the question was, you know, what does the price action mean in between these? So just to recap on the RSI Pro, which has been a great addition to our arsenal, our uh, excellent arsenal here that Joe has created. Uh, so the red circles, what does that mean? It's bearish divergence. So typically that happens when price has gone up or stayed the same but the RSI levels have come down. This is hidden bearish divergence. And then typically it's a bit of it runs ahead of it. So we've been watching this play out though, uh, over time where these were sort of premonitions of lower highs. So, and I just want to focus on the most recent ones, but RSI pro red circle, red circle, price came down. Every time we had a red circle, price came down. And so where we're at now, is and zoom out a bit, zoom in and out, zoom out. We're a little bit inconclusive. I'm going to hide the TSI so we can make the RSI Pro bigger and just look at this a bit. So watching this as a sort of leading indicator though, let's look at that again. On the bearish side, we had an RSI bearish divergence. So the RSI was kind of lower here, lower high. And up here, there's sort of the price was the same, same high. That's why these divergences can be so powerful. And uh, so here again, so we came down, we saw some bullish divergences. And basically that means there was a lower, lower high and a lower low in prices, but the RSI was sort of even. Then we pushed up, we had a bearish divergence again with the red circle, signifying another pullback. And then another green the bullish divergence showing a push higher. Honestly, that's all I would pay attention to. And um, the only other thing I would pay attention to is, is the RSI above that 50% level, right? Because if it's below there, it's oversold. And as it gets up toward the midpoint and going higher, it's in overbought territory. So we are in overbought territory here. Uh, we don't have a bearish RSI here printing. We have a higher high on the RSI and a higher high in Bitcoin. Hence, no divergence. Right, divergence is when uh, either Bitcoin's price is going one way and the RSI is going flat or down, or vice versa. So hopefully that answers your question. I think on a simple terms, just use it as a guideline: red RSI bearish, green RSI bullish. And in some cases, I almost want to call it our early early reversal indicator because at times that has uh, come up in front of the our ERI signal, right? So right in here, we had the ERI trigger on Tuesday. It was a day before we had this bullish ERI. So again, RSI Pro relative strength index. ERI is our early reversal indicator, early. That was our accidental discovery. Uh, and by the way, if you're new here and don't have these, uh, go over to cryptomastery.org slash pro to get your handle, hands on these excellent indicators you really need to have these because otherwise you're trading with standard tools that everybody uses like MACD and RSI and Stochastics RSI, which everyone else is using. You don't have any edge. Ours actually have some, uh, most are lagging indicators. Ours are designed to be preceding indicators, at least some of them. And when they align, they're far superior than what everyone else is using. So if you want to have an edge, uh, you can go over to our website, moonstream.io. Scroll down here and click on that Crypto Mastery link. That will take you to the CryptoMastery.com.org, rather. Sorry, where did I put this? CryptoMastery.org slash pro. I have some toolbars in the way. So that's where, go watch this video. If you don't have these, at the very least after this class, go watch this 30-minute training 
and video and find out about our new Crypto Mastery Pro indicators that are the best I've used in 25 years. We've designed them to be, Joe the programmer is a quant engineer, professional trader, and a mad scientist genius. And I mean that in the best possible way because these signals are giving us a serious edge and all of what we do here, this is the backbone. Okay, and they're aesthetically pleasing. You don't have all these hideous, obnoxious colors and lines and circles going everywhere. When these align, markets move in that direction, bottom line. So go check that out. Uh, back to the charts here, uh, we can see when we start to see some convergences. I think I've answered that question. The um, you know the biggest ones, and we can see our buy order blocks here showing us some clues on Bitcoin. Let's take a look at the total market cap, which uh, also has some it's, it's interesting, interesting and significant clues. I'm gonna turn my light off here. It's going like it's overheating. All right. And so we're getting a bearish uh, ERI on the total market cap and a bearish TSI. So this is, as you might imagine from my uh, tonality and what I just said, this is a bearish signal. And so let's also take a look at, let's see, I'm going to add my signal line back onto there. We're looking for confluence. Confluence is the name of the game. Uh, we do have sell pressure up on the total market cap up here, which I noted. This is a short-term pullback, and if we really want to look at total market cap, I'm going to redraw my upper trend lines just because new information equals new decision. It looks, you know, we had that trend line there. If we draw this down, that's a little bit more accurate. So our new parallel trend channel is more like this, but it really is a broadening descending wedge, so it's not going to apply directly. However, what we need to pay attention to here, again, it's like peeking behind the curtain of the Wizard of Oz. So because you don't have these signals otherwise, the ERI TSI, and I believe we should have a new version of the trade success checklist out. If not today, then imminently. Uh, Myrene, if you're there, if we do have a new one, let me know. And what is going on here? I have somehow lost the TSI signal. Did I accidentally close it, you guys? But if you don't have these, by the way, you'll find them under your trading indicators right here under invite only once you sign up for uh, those at cryptomastery.org slash pro. And it appears somehow I have uh, erased my TSI. My TSI is a trend strength indicator. And what's going on here? My computer is... There it is. It's the, the error. I've discovered the error, you guys. The error is between my ears. I went right past it. <laughs> so uh, RSI Pro we have. We have Bollinger Bands on there somewhere. I'm looking for my TSI Pro right there. Bingo. All right. No. Uh, yes, I had clicked on something different. Uh, all right. So basically this. When we see a red ERI, basically, you guys see this? Um, up here, the red arrow, and if you're new here and, and if you're a more advanced trader, you might think that's cute, but um, uh, the early reversal indicator was an accidental discovery that we found, and essentially when price gets to a certain overbought or under uh, oversold area, and then goes back up below 20 or below 80 in three time periods, and also within a Keltner channel, magic happens. Uh, and, and again, so this has been hugely powerful on a weekly chart. It's called every major market top on a weekly chart and on the daily when we get a bearish ERI arrow there, that indicates, I believe what we've discovered is when programmatic buying kicks in by institutions in Wales. I think that's what it, what it means. All right, so if I showed you the actual oscillator, it's, a, it's not fun to look at. So we made a prettier version with arrows. But if you're, uh, if you're sitting here saying, oh cool, you have cute little arrows. Now this is, this is the backbone of, of what we're doing, especially in conjunction with the trend strength indicator. When it goes red, 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 and below 80, we see continuation of the pullback. And up here, we have red on the trend strength indicator pointing down toward 80. Not quite there yet, but uh, this is going to be interesting, though. I also have, we also have an uptrending trend line. And really what I'm watching for here is a breakout of this and getting up into this region. We are going to see some sell pressure. We can see that. And if you didn't have this, one of our Crypto Mastery Pro indicators, the sell block, the order block indicator without that you wouldn't know that there's a huge amount of sell pressure up in this range 
So this is invaluable. It's one of the best things we've added to our arsenal here this year. So essentially, if I were to draw it, you know, I think we do come down, bounce off of this trend channel, come up in here and either sort of retest and get stuck in this cell area, right? And then we'll see another, we're gonna zigzag our way out of this. That's what I think, but I think we need to get past this November 5th uh, low, cycle low, and then we really see Bitcoin pushing much higher quickly into the end of the year. That's what I think. And any questions on that, you can drop that in. Uh, let's see, what else do we want to look at? I want to make sure I've closed as many things as I can because the, my machine here is uh, really spinning fast. Uh, let's see, and the little motor is going, running round and round. Bitcoin, let's see, moonstream.io is our website, of course. Go check out everything we have, and uh, including the Future of Crypto Summit and all of these uh, resources here. So, uh, and I talked about, um, let me just jump over to M3 Active Trader. Uh, if you want the trade success checklist, um, again, we're going to have a new one released any time now. And um, so uh, watch for that. But it's a, it's a useful tool for using with our Crypto Mastery tools. As you, as you see different patterns, you put a check mark in the box. I'm not going to pull it up today. But uh, if you check the box, it will give a trade score, a trade success score, which you can see down in this region. If you get a score of two or three or more, that's entry point, time to get in the trade. So for example, when you have those two things in your favor or aligned, either green ERI and green TSI, that's a buy signal. And if we start seeing other signals starting to clue in here, like uh, the other one I was going to add here, which is part of our four kings, which I call it as the, um, where is it, the signal, uh, signal line pro. Okay. So these, when they are all aligned, very powerful. And I'm going to move this up. They're all based on different algorithms, you guys. So if you don't have these, by the way, you're going to be up against uh, traders like us and my M3 extra traders will do have these. And they have given us such insight. They're better than anything else out there. And I'll say that with confidence. So especially when we start to see these uh, align and have confluence. Uh, so anyway, um, coming back out of this, I'll erase this line. Let's go over and look at some individual coins. If you guys want me to look at anything, I will. Uh, let's look at uh, ETH. ETH hasn't been doing much. Looks like Chainlink is moving up a bit. Uh, ETH is just kind of waiting. I would not be buying ETH right now. It has a red ERI and a red TSI. This is likely going to come back down on ETH. And that signals to me that uh, this is more likely going to play out, come down in this region and then bounce out of there. But we've got to see the TSI cycle down on this, um, the, sorry, the ERI come down and the TSI come back down again. I think on that next push higher, we'll see that breakout. On uh, Chainlink, uh, Chainlink finally showing some movement, but I, I want to see it above $13. You know, it, it is bouncing off this rising higher low trend line, but it's overbought on the uh, TSI. And what we do there typically is we'll go look at a weekly chart. The weekly oh, supersedes the daily, but weekly. So here's the thing on the weekly. You can see I have a note to self, watch weekly. The TSI is above this 20 line. It's going higher. The signal line is green. We had an, an ERI all the way back here, but right now we're still in a downtrending channel. So I, I'm not convinced on chain link until it gets above and closes above $13. I won't be buying it until then. I like to buy into strength. Jumping over to ETH here, ETH has been uh, somewhat less strong, less exciting. Although on the weekly chart, looking at ETH here, it is breaking out of its upward trending parallel channel and retesting that. So that is a bullish signal. And um, so basically uh, that's what we'll be watching for here on a weekly. The TSI is just going green. And so sure enough, ETH has been showing some strength on this chart here, but overbought on the daily. So what does that mean? Probably going to pull back for a few days to a week, okay? And then toward the end of the week, then push higher because that, that weekly chart looks good. But this is a bullish uh, breakout pattern here. It's breaking out of the downtrending channel potentially, but actually this is where you want to be really careful on drawing your parallel trend channels. It looks like I was a little sloppy. Um, we want to and capture, encapsulate uh, the high, the highs, you know, drawing these lines from high to high. So maybe it's a little bit a different. Move that down here a bit, I'm moving it down, make sure to capture those up. So it's within the trend channel. So it's not breaking out of this parallel trend channel yet. 
Uh, so likely this needs a little more time and a, a pullback, as I was saying. So ETH, uh, not there yet. Let's look at Saul. Saul has been looking interesting. And I do think Saul is one that leads this market cycle. And along with Bitcoin, a little bit overbought here. And uh, let's see. But I do like it's putting in higher lows. Let's look at a weekly chart. Because the weekly will dictate and drive things. So weekly still showing strength. This is how you use multiple time frames. So the daily could chop around a bit, maybe pull down for a few days. But look at this straight, great weekly signals. We have the TSI or the ERI go green here, the early reversal indicator on the weekly. Then the TSI up above 20 right there. So we've been pushing up. We just got the signal line going green. And also back on the same day as the ERI, that early reversal indicator, we had our RSI Pro showing bullish divergence. So that, ladies and gentlemen, we call the four kings. ERI, TSI, Signal, and RSI. We used to use the bell indicator, but we're going with the ERI, TSI, RSI, and Signal line. They're different algorithms when they align, and they're all part of that crypto mastery suite of signals. So when you pay for this, it's $4.97 a year, or we have a great lifetime offer. You can click on and check it out. You get our rocket indicator, which I'll show you in a minute. That's You won't find that anywhere else. Nowhere else, it's a pattern I've been recognizing for years. We programmed it, and essentially it means that price is about to shoot up, shoot up into the sky, as we say. The crypto screener, I'll show you that. That's included. The ERI Pro, the Trend Pro, the TSI Pro, and the order block detector I've been sharing with you, the RSI Pro. Let me show you the Bollinger Bands if this is new to you. How many of you guys are familiar with Bollinger Bands? just by a show of hands or put it in the chat, because if you're using standard Bollinger Bands, uh, you're, you're, you're missing out because the standard Bollinger Bands are wrong for crypto. The settings are wrong. Let's see. The Trend Pro topped at a dollar symbol just before the drop. Uh, Perry, we'll look at that. Yeah, that's interesting. I try not to throw too much at you because there's a lot to take in. And uh, let's see. Okay, Perry also saying side point regarding the point of holding one's own Bitcoin off exchanges. We can even run our own. Yeah, yeah that, that's a bit beyond the scope of uh, this class. But thanks for dropping that in. Maybe drop that in M3. Uh, are you in M3, Perry? Uh, that's our class we do tomorrow. I would highly recommend joining that. We go into a lot deeper detail. I do trade alerts. Had some really good ones the last couple of weeks. So check that out and you can find that on our website at moonstream.io and uh, or moonstream.io slash M3. If you want to go straight there, scroll down here. Uh, I would I think you'd be good fit for that, Barry. If you're not, are you in M3? I'm not sure. Uh, check this out and include some more indicators. Uh, get trade alerts. We have a 24-7 a, a signal chat room. And we get a lot of great traders, smart traders in there. You get a membership area with some training videos, some great uh, resources like our po interactive portfolio tracker. Great way to become profitable when you're new, doing your trades this way, showing the P&Ls, and uh, it lets you get better at taking profits and taking losses. And our DCA trading template, dollar cost averaging, this is the same template that I create for my private training clients. I work with a number of people one-on-one. -on -one. If that might be of interest, you can also go over to our website there and go to this page, moonstream.io slash work with me. I have a limited number of time slots for the coaching clients and private clients. Just signed up somebody new this last week. And I have only so many that I can make room for. But if that's you, it's typically somebody with six figures or more in crypto that wants to preserve it and grow it. And we work one-on-one, -on -one, I create those templates, that DCA template, and we do one-on-one -on -one coaching. So you can go here and schedule a call, a very much no pressure call. We just go through it. And there are some uh, testimonials there with our current clients, if that's something you're interested in. So um, back to here, let's see, Solana-based, oh, okay, not going to talk about that. Not going to talk about meme coins today in this class, you guys. So um, anyway, Saul just sort of inching higher. I think it's uh, the markets are just waiting for that November 5th certainty. And, and also Bitcoin's likely going to be the front runner. You know, you guys have heard me say, if you own a stable full of horse race, uh, race horses, and you don't rotate them, you race your best horse. You know, that horse gets tired, you go to the next best horse. That's the same with crypto. Seeing some pullbacks and things like phantom coin, 
you know, overall seeing a pullback all around. Markets can't go up forever. Uh, it did hit some resistance and great pace for these sell blocks, you guys. This has been such a great uh, addition. Our order block detector picking up now could have caught it a few days earlier with the RSI Pro and the ERI showing bearish and up in this sell block. So these sellers are pushing prices down. I'd be buying in the green zone, selling in the red zone. Really simple uh, in principle, but uh, we wish we had that in the last cycle. All right, just a couple things going down the line here, looking at stacks and Metis, a number of these pulling back, you know, hitting resistance, not a good thing, not a bad thing, just a thing. And uh, we want to wait for pullbacks in the green zones. Uh, looks like Metis may be getting ready to break out there. It's got the buyer support just below it. But, uh, you know, it's a pullback day, so I'm not going to really look at too many coins uh, unless you guys want me to look at one or two. I would advise not buying in these sell order blocks because if you can see, that's when prices go down. And in the green order box, prices go up. This is a fantastic indicator. And uh, we've been using this a lot more to buy low, sell high, which uh, is the uh, name of the game. All right. So just running down the list here. Let me hop over to a different list. Do you guys have anything you want me to look at and how are we doing on time? We're coming up on the hour here. So usually I just go about an hour in this class. We'll generally go deeper in that retire, uh, the retire rich classes on Thursdays and also our M3 classes tomorrow. So if you do, uh, or if you might have interest in a, a bigger basket of coins to trade from, you know, our retire rich class is, uh, is excellent for that. You can learn about that from our website. You just go over there. You'll land a page called a retire rich presentation. It's got some buttons down here with a highlight reel. These are more longer term plays, buy and hold future Netflix and Amazons. And you can read some testimonials and see pictures of some of our students down below, even uh, some of our past trades. This is a small fraction of the trades in retire rich since we started it last year. But a couple here, this one went up 260%. That's Filecoin, render up 282%. And the INJ, which then went up 568% and is pulled back down. So I think it's right. That's uh, going to be a good re-entry here soon. So, um, you know what, guys, this class is to both teach you and be a training for our crypto mastery signals, but also give you a better idea of what all we do here. Uh, everyone has different interests and needs. So we uh, want to sh showcase all of the different services that we have. There's something for everybody. And if you're not sure, uh, just go book a call with me and our team. Usually it's me on the call and I can walk you through what's available to you. And that's at moonstream.rio. All right. So uh, let's see, you guys, any comments, any chat? I don't see any new chats. So what I'm going to do is hop over to a different list here and our, uh, let's see which one is it, the Crypto Mastery lists here. We can go through. We've been watching some of these. Haven't updated that in a while. And not going to do it today. We don't really have, I don't really have enough time. But um, overall, the markets are looking interesting. I think we're a brief pullback range for a few days, maybe a bit longer bounce. And then we pull back again into that November 5th time frame for the market cycle low. And then we rock it out of there. That's what I think. All right, you guys, what else? Uh, Caspa uh, came down quite a bit, bouncing a little bit. I don't see... You know, I'm not inclined to buy anything on this pullback, you guys. So why don't we pick this up? I, I may be uh, out of the office next week. So we'll see, depending on the internet and uh, and the weather outside in Key West, <laughs> if I'll have class next week. We'll try to do it. We haven't done a palm tree episode in a while, not since Tulum. I don't see a lot happening here, you guys. So unless you have anything specifically you want me to, to, to look at, I'm going to let you go. And where's the chat? So you guys are quiet here today. I see one more. Okay, here we go. What is it? Um, the Bitcoin one week, Francisco says. Let's see. Okay, I missed some of these. We've got Trend Pro. Uh, I don't have time. I'm not going to be able to get to the Trend Pro here today. Um, well, I, I'll pull it up for you, Perry. Sure. Let's see. And... Uh, so, uh, you know what, Vade, if you want to watch the replay, we can. We already talked about um, Bitcoin. We let off with that. So uh, in all fairness to everyone here who's here, I'll, uh, I'll not repeat it. But um, I, I'll look at the one week, Francisco. Um, all right, let's jump back to Bitcoin. 
Back to Bitcoin. Let's see. And so here we go. All right, uh, slightly different chart here. And so Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin breaking out, we talked about it's overbought. It has the TSI rolling over on the weekly time frame. Uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's what I like about this is the bull flag seems to be breaking out. What we want to see in a bull flag is a breakout and retest. So the fact that Bitcoin's coming down is good. We want to see it retest the upper boundary of this to be a proper bull flag breakout. And uh, as we've seen on some of the prior measured moves, you know, this uh, bull flag, uh, flagpole, as it were, can take us to around 150,000. So if we do that, clone that, you know, that this is certainly in play. I think I think we're going to have some trouble at 100K, maybe some trouble at 80K. So it won't be a shoot straight shot up but that 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 150k target plays out beautifully and yes i know some people do bull flag breakouts like this which takes us to 200k on the conservative side i like to do it from the bottom because i've seen it go, go both ways and uh so basically 150k target if you know if we're able to continue this rally and we don't see a deflationary bust here into early part of the year and um there's a case for that so i think i think we we either rocket much higher, faster into the end of December on Bitcoin and then start seeing money flow into alts and then a whole the bull runs over end of March. I don't want that, um, you know, but um, the four year cycle, everyone's a little too complacent about this four year cycle and almost to the to extent of being entitled that because uh, I talk to traders one on one. I love meeting you guys one on one. You know, if you're ever unsure what you're just book a call if you want some more help. And we'll point in the right direction. But what I'm hearing that concerns me is almost a complacency and a um, what's the right word? A very casual, entitled uh, way. They're like, well, I mean, I you know, people saying basically expecting to double their money and expecting the bull run to double, but wanting more. That's a dangerous. Uh, that's a dangerous. Um, thought and and to always be aware of your confirmation bias. Uh, nothing is promised here, so we want to be aware of that. That being said, I do think that 150 is on the cards this cycle. Now, that either means we, and I've been saying this for a year, I think we could see a double top like we saw in 2013. And so we could start seeing a pullback. We could push up to 100K and see a significant pullback, maybe sideways for a while, and then a second peak later in the year. Uh, we just don't know. It really depends on a lot. Uh, the, the closest alligator to the boat is, as we say in Florida, is what happens here. So we're seeing this looking good on this bull flag breakout potentially. Uh, the our signals are green. We've gone recently green on this uh, signal line on the weekly time frame, and the vertical green line is that key bell, the trend indicator. So we've coded it so you, if you're on a lower version of trading view, that you don't need to have the higher subscriptions which limit how many signals you can run at a time. Uh, these signals are designed to be more than one thing at a time. Does that make sense? So essentially this green vertical line means that there's a bell on the trend indicator without having it handy, right? So we don't even need to show this trend if this vertical green line means a bell. If you're new here, uh, the trend indicator is a longer term kind of follow through, slightly longer term than the others. And it's kind of like, it's fun because it kind of looks like Mario from Mario Brothers is in a come running out, grabbing all the coins, cha-ching, 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 right? And then the bag of money is typically uh, take a place to take uh, the rest of your profits. The first one, the dollar sign is take some profits. I usually wait till the bag of money I'm part Irish, apparently. So the bag of money is uh, where the leprechaun would pop out. Anyway, and then you take profits at the bag of money, keep a moon bag, but then the key in the bell, the bell is a new buy signal. But generally after it goes two cycles, I'm leery of getting back in again. So that is the weekly. I know you asked about uh, the uh, just headline popped up. Expert sets 285K Bitcoin price target, probably based on that bull flag breakout from the upper boundary, which was... 
but I, I'd rather be conservative on that bull flag breakout because I think we have some headwinds ahead of us. Uh, on the the trend indicator, uh, whoever asked that, it's I'm pushing the wrong button here and put it down to the bottom. I like it at the bottom. You can reorder these, obviously. So in terms of this, um, you know, I would have, in hindsight, which is obviously 2020, taking some of profits. It's a good idea to take some profits on the, the first dollar sign. And I would say that the nuance there is until we're in the parabolic bull run, because then I would just hold and we'll see, we'll see three cycles often of key bell, key bell, key bell. And then it sort of starts to peter out. Uh, but since we're sort of, we're, we're having the, you know, we're, we're in a choppy sideways uh, pattern here still, you know, take profits when you have them. We're in a swing trading, take profit, uh, timing of the market. So trading the ranges, hopefully it answers your question. Uh, let's see, let's come back here. I do have to run here. Let's see uh, the drop in Bitcoin's uh, golfing candle. Perry said, let's see. I'm oh, sorry, Francisco wanted a two day chart. Uh, two day, yeah. It's, so in two day, it's a bearish engulfing candle. And, and there's no surprise there. I did cover that in the beginning of class that I think Bitcoin pulls back down a bit and then we go higher. So it's not a good thing or a bad thing. It depends how you look at it. If if you want, if you're in cash and you took some profits and you want to buy lower, it's a good thing. I'd buy back in the 65K range and for the next push higher. So the two day uh, chart is a good way to eliminate some noise, a little bit of a bearish engulfing candle. The TSI still rolling over. So, uh, you know, I do like that uh, that trick. Let's see, Perry saying bearish engulfing. It, it, it is a couple days ago. Uh, is that on the daily? Let's go back to a daily. Yes, it's both bearish engulfing on the daily, right? So, but you know, we have this nice buy block here and, and that means the buyers are lining up at 65.5, maybe down in the 64 region. So, you know, look, I wouldn't be panic selling here. I would be, you know, um, this is actually a good buy area. I think 65K to 66K and running right out of there. So Dr. T, uh, yeah, so, all right. So uh, Cabo, Dr. Dr. T, I lived in San Diego for three years and uh, never made it um, down to Cabo. I have friends that live there and they love it. So good for you. And uh, yeah, for sure about, we're happy to talk to you about some private. Um, now would be the time to, you know, if you were going to do it, now would be the time to do it. Um, I think that most people are going to get this wrong, and uh, but uh, it, and it's it's there's but there's a lot there's a lot at play here. That's really interesting things that I'm seeing, but uh, essentially I think Bitcoin leads, and Solana follows second. ETH will sort of come along for the ride a little bit, but um, Bitcoin runs into December ish. We'll watch our signals, but as was what always happens in the cycle, Bitcoin leads. It's the safest. It's the fastest horse right we race the fastest horse people make a bunch of money on bitcoin let's say it goes to 150k people rightfully are taking profits but they don't want to put profit into their bank and in the stable coin because what happens is usually they it's like playing with the house's money they put the money the profits into the altcoin so then money flows into solana and eth and then from there it's flowing into the other tier twos and tier threes and then ultimately all filters down to the shit coins and meme coins and and then it's all over um so there you go but um anyway uh i am leaving town um dr t if you'd like to have a conversation and sooner than later uh go go schedule that i think i have some time wednesday but i leave thursday uh, and uh for some meetings in miami and down to Key West for a little bit for a little R and R, and uh, may or may not stick around for the Fort Lauderdale boat show. You know, I think I think things are going to be quiet till November fifth. But but positioning ahead of that, I think November fifth, if not sooner, but around November fifth, we we just really start to go vertical and and my new um, trajectory on all that. Um, you know, um, no way to know. Some people might want want to front run that, but it's the market cycle low in the election, and there's too much uncertainty. A lot, there's a lot of money on the sidelines that, uh, you know, markets like certainty and until we have certainty, uh, they're waiting. So, you know, 
All right, so let's see. But yeah, I'd be happy to chat with you, Dr. T. Uh, see, uh, memes seem to be the leveraged version. What is this, Perry? And the memes seem to be the leveraged version of each blockchain. Um, I don't know what you mean by that, but uh, there's not leverage. You can't trade leverage on meme coins, to my knowledge, at least none of the ones I am in, like uh, Brett Coin, greatest uh, meme coin name ever, of course. Uh, let's see. What's your point of view on ETH for the coming bull market? Uh, covered that uh, for the full bull market. Um, they'd, uh, let, we'll jump back to ETH. It's it's underperforming because the ETH ETF didn't do well, and um, and people are rightfully saying that uh, Solana has a better potential ROI. But I would I have some ETH, but I I'm four to one Sol over ETH because I think it has higher ROI. And uh, whoa, what happened there? Well, I've just buggered the entire chart here. Let me refresh it. Maybe it has an auto save. But uh, well, my 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 read on ETH for the bull run, I I think it could go to ten thousand. That would be a five x, and uh, like Saul, I think could go to no. I'm getting these backwards. Saul could go to a thousand, which is around a five to six x ETH. Uh, let's see. Let's pull up ETH again. ETH going to um. 10,000 would be a 4x, but I think that's, you know, maybe 6x, maybe ETH goes to 15k, but Solana generally should be 20% of ETH. So if, if ETH goes to 10k, then um, uh, then Sol should go to 200 at least, at least. I think there's, I think that that study should be revised upward because Fire Dancer is coming out and that's going to dramatically increase transactions uh, per second. But um, but ETH, it's sort of uh, ETH is kind of losing its narrative because it's it's the second strongest network, but the gas fees are still too high, and the ETH ETF really wasn't seeing that much interest. That could certainly change though. Ultimately, I'd like ETH, you know, uh, but um, I like Solana better from a Monaro ROI standpoint. Do I have both? I do have both, but um, I'm four to one invested Sol, maybe five to one invested Sol to ETH. That's my personal opinion. Uh, let's see. Okay, good to know, Perry. Control Z. Yeah, it usually works for anything, but even erasing something. Um, okay, good to know. And I think that I think that covers it. Uh, is it okay to buy Solana, uh, Maria? I I so I can't give I can't give individual uh, trading advice, but let's take a look at the chart. And based on the chart, I can tell you what I think uh, it will happen. I can't tell you what's safe and not, none of this is, is is tremendously safe. Well, I mean, I will say this, what has been great on Solana and very relatively extremely safe is these buy blocks. So these are all buyers and you usually don't see them overlapping and this thick. And those of you who have been in class for the last few weeks and a few months, uh, this has been a bonanza. For Solana, I've, I've nearly doubled my Solana holdings just buying in the green buy block zones and selling on bounces on these ERI tops. I've turned 50 into 90 Sol, and that would have been over 100 if I didn't uh, uh, bumble one of my trades and didn't hit the final button, right? But um, if 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 Solana does come back down below 125, buy it all day long. Um, you know, and that's to all of you. I can do one to many recommendations. I just can't say specifically what you should do. Got it? Uh, I am not a financial advisor. Uh, fortunately, because so most of them are terrible. But um, uh, so what I do see on Solana is is we're coming up into a resistance zone. Let's look at our signals here. Um, I would own some Solana. And, and, and frankly, and, and so there's two things here. There's the chart, which normally I would take some profits here and wait for a pullback. But it's Solana. And back in August of 2021, August 1st specifically, when I wrote the Moonstream newsletter, my recommendation was buy Solana on a pullback. It was trading around $38. I said, buy it at 35. And it did. It came down the next day. We got our $35 entry. And it took off like a rocket. We took profits, but we took profits too early. And I was said, well, let's wait for a pullback. And it didn't really pull back. It just kept on going. And so that's the power of Solana. And so I would, I would own some 
and I would buy on any pullbacks by more, uh, which is what I'm doing now. I did buy some more uh, yesterday or the other day, and uh, I think it does push up to 200 where I would take profits, and uh, it's a very tradable coin. So we talk a lot about that in uh, the M3 Active Trader class tomorrow, and I do give buy and sell recommendations uh, in that class. So if you're interested in uh, really capitalizing on this bull run, uh, here are this M3 Active Trader, you can see I'm giving daily commentary and uh, we've come up with some on some new resources here. I've created a dashboard with fear and greed and the pie cycle top and some like uh, heat maps of so that's all in the active trader and, uh, and a lot of smart traders in here also contributing this, this if you if you really want to maximize the bull run and you're okay with sort of swing trading and want to learn that, then uh, you should jump into the M3 active trader because uh, we're very active in here daily. Uh, not for everybody. I mean, if you're more of a buy and hold trader, uh, the retire rich class is more of that uh, longer term. And that's, this is, you know, still fairly active in here, just with a longer term outlook on retire rich. And we do those classes on Thursday with Mike and myself. Uh, so anyway, look, I'm not here to sell stuff to you guys. Uh, we, we do run a business, but we're really here to help you. And we've created uh sort of a buffet of services and tools for where you're at to meet your, you where you at and your, I don't like the word journey, but you know, um, where you're at in your sort of uh, skill level or your beginner or your intermediate, you like the action swing trading where the odds are greatest. And that's generally uh, can be very profitable if done right. Or if you are longer term, you just want to know what to buy. I just put out a shopping list of 40 coins with price uh, entry zones for retire rich. So it's a little different. Um, okay. So I think I've answered that. Uh, is it okay to buy Solana this week? I don't know. <laughs> is it defined? Okay. Uh, do you, uh, if you don't have any Solana, I would have some, uh, you know, would it don't, but also don't go all in on these things because what I see with Solana is we're sort of trading into this, into a symmetrical wedge and more than likely we're going to see this kind of zigzag pattern and it'll resolve to the upside and it'll come up in here and then it's going to pull back a little bit because all of those sellers and then and then hopefully shoot up once we get above 211 you know it's off to the races but the, the majority of money is going to flow into bitcoin I think Solana and ETH too. I think Solana outperforms ETH going into the end of the year, but there are there, look at all the sell pressure in these these buy and sell blocks. So at each point, these are great places to take profit. And that reminds me, I didn't talk about our amazing Bollinger Band signals, and so I'll turn off the ERI. The Bollinger Bands you've heard of Bollinger Bands probably, but if you're using standard off the shelf ones, they're not configured correctly they have the wrong standard deviation setting. Um, I say wrong because I was the only one to discuss. I don't know anyone else that's ever talked about this. I changed the standard deviation from two to three and it works much better for crypto. So what we use it as when it's touching the upper boundary on this Bollinger Band, so you guys can see that. Uh, let's see, where are my settings? It, it, it's, it's when it touches the upper Bollinger Band, it usually sells back, especially when especially when if you see this, let me put a circle around it, when there's also a sell order block. Okay, see that? What happened there? Pushed up, hit the upper Bollinger Band, uh, sell order, sell orders dropped to the lower Bollinger Band and then into the lower buy order blocks in hindsight. Isn't it amazing? And then we have this touch the upper Bollinger Band, sold off, hit the lower Bollinger Bands back into a buy block zone. This, you know, the coins have their own personalities. Learn this one. And if you don't have these signals, go buy them. Uh, we don't need, it's not that we need the money. We really want you to have these tools because you'll be more successful. And that's ultimately what we want also. Down here, lower Bollinger Band. You know, Steve Nissen, the, the, the found, father of candlesticks, we were on a webinar once. He's an old friend of mine. And he taught me that when, when price hits an upper Bollinger Band, because he's friends with John Bollinger. So he learned it from him. It usually will go back to the lower area and vice versa. So you see that? You probably didn't notice that before, did you? I hadn't. For, I didn't 
see that. It was right in front of me. I didn't see that for the first 20 years of my training until Steve pointed it out. Really useful, though, especially with our buy blocks. So from here, I mean, we're kind of in the middle of no man's land. So I'm long Solana. And, but I'll be selling some up here, especially if we get a big spike where it touches an upper Bollinger Band in this region. Why? Because it's likely to come back down. And that's why Solana is a great trading coin. So hopefully that helps. Okay, guys, I think that's all I have time for. Uh, what else do we have? Did I miss anything? I'm due. Uh, thank you, Leslie. Hey, Leslie. Uh, let's see. So buy blocks would move up with a yeah, it's an interesting observation too, the Perry. I, I don't know why they're not moving up either. Um, but Solana's been a great trading range coin. And um, you know, I think we'll see more of that this cycle versus the, you know, as Raul Paul calls the banana zone. I think it's gonna be more, you know, take profits, buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high, and 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 so we'll we talk about that more in Active Trader, how to do both. But um, anyway, uh, this buy block, again, anything, I have limit buy orders at 20, 125, 120, but I'm about to probably lift them and just get long and chill, as Mike says, because we're coming into that phase where it's just, uh, you know, uh, rational thinking uh, and, and is, goes away and the irrational exuberance, as Greenspan said, kind of kicks in. So let's see, how can I view these buy and sell blocks? Um, yeah, well, Vade, uh, this is part of our um, our pro indicators. So if you go over to cryptomastery.org slash pro, these uh, these buy order blocks, the order block detector here, and our special Bollinger Bands, these are all included. And so I would recommend going uh, to the site and uh, and go watch the video because we these this is the hot, this is the holy grail. I I know there's other things out there, but I've tried them all. I've tr I've tried. I tried to use uh, what's crypto faces. The uh, I didn't like it. I, this is much better, I think. Um, and, and that's those aren't even his indicators. People think he invented it. It's that is a white label uh, uh, open source technology. Um, but watch this video here. I go through it all, and uh, basically everything on these. And we haven't even talked about the the light green or the money flow. So I would go watch this certainly. It's four ninety seven a year. There's a lifetime offer for fourteen ninety seven that we should have raised by now. But we've been busy, but that's where you can find out uh, more, you guys. Uh, and, and look, not to be self serving. Um, you know, I, I won't starve to death if you don't buy these. This is for you. Uh, I want you to have an edge. Go get the pro signals. They're so we've been refining these since. Well, Joe's been building them for ten years. I came on in twenty twenty one, and we've been fine tuning and tweaking them and really refining them for uh, for years let's see i did somebody say if there was a rocket because i i think i had some rocket alerts too recently this is another one of our signals and it wasn't on solana i think it was i can't remember now but um well we don't we're out of time a rocket basically is when it's on a launch pad and it shoots up in the air like this i, I i'm not trying to rush you guys my uh macbook here this thing by the way this is my old macbook my new one's in my office but this thing's still turning away best investment i've ever made uh, i just don't want to push it too hard she's a she's an old old model <laughs> but um and i hear i hear the fan we're in a way she's trying to keep up uh let's see what else was there uh the so uh, the buy and sell blocks. Well, well, I can show you how to, you'd have to have our indicators, uh, they, and basically they pull, they, they pull from the aggregate data on Coinbase. So these are sell limit orders on the books and these are buy limit orders on the books on Coinbase. They are slightly different from the different exchanges, but mostly the same. And I'll usually use the bigger exchange like Coinbase. Okay. Uh, but hugely valuable. I mean, it's like having the cheat code uh, on that. All right, you guys, anything else here? Uh, let's see, we saw making a triangle. You call it a triangle. I call it a symmetrical wedge. But 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 either way, triangle, symmetrical wedge, it, the price will either break out or break down. It doesn't go sideways forever. You know, it's coming to a head. Either the bulls are going to win or the bears. That's what's great about a symmetrical wedge there. All right, so uh, yeah, Perry, Saul has a psychological number of 200 as resistance. 
Um, you know, and I would say yes, but Solana always gets a yes, but because if you remember that 2021 when it just went vertical and it went up 657 percent since my I told people to get in at thirty five dollars, it did. But the problem is, I also told people to take profits a little too early. Uh, now, now not all of it, but but you know most of us, including myself, kind of missed part of the move. So Sol, I don't know. I I would say sell some Sol at two hundred, but be ready to buy back uh, on when we get an ERI TSI going bullish again. Don't be late. And Solana is uh, going to lead, I think. Uh, great. Thank you, June. Glad you could join us. And I hope you have a great day also. Uh, Francisco, you're welcome. And if you'd like to join us for Wednesday's class, we do a deeper dive in all of this. That is that Moonstream uh, M3. It's not for everybody, and, um, but you do get quite a lot in here. And uh, there's me and my goofy nerd sunglasses, uh, not sunglasses. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's sunny outside, as you can tell. I'm, I'm thinking of going over to it's in the sun here, so I'm thinking sunglasses, but um, I can actually have some work to do. But here's me in front of the trading monitor showing I actually do trade. I am uh, not uh, one of these YouTubers that makes their money from YouTube views. And you can read about some of the uh, student recommendations here. We haven't updated this in years. Obviously, there's we ask for more, we get more. And there's a whole bunch of bonuses here, including, including with M3. You guys may not have seen this, but you get a free one-hour trading session with me coaching session that's a thousand dollar value so and all these other bonuses so definitely go check that out but otherwise i'll let you guys go have a great week everyone i think it's going to be pretty quiet um and uh we'll see some just normal we're going to see some healthy pullbacks and then we'll see i think we'll see a push up higher or, and uh, maybe another pullback into that november 5th cycle low Election uncertainty out of the way, um, you know, if poly market's right and it's 60-40, uh, you know, not going to get into politics, but the, the Republican administration, very pro-Bitcoin, um, Donald Trump even saying he would initiate a strategic reserve buy. And I don't think anyone's prepared for what that means. If, if a sovereign nation such as the United States were to buy a million Bitcoin, uh, that's the way we get that God candle that so many have um, wondered about and prayed for. And and there is also uh, a video I saw recently where they said, you, you you are not bullish enough. There was a VC being interviewed by Rand at Crypto Banter saying, You're, we're not bullish enough. Uh, like when big money comes in and, and if... I'll say if, but let's just say when Bitcoin becomes adopted as a strategic reserve asset in a major country, there will be country FOMO. You guys, if you haven't seen my study, Path to 150K Bitcoin, we talk about that. And I did just update it last week. Uh, let's do that real quick because I think it's important. And the dominoes are starting to fall. We One of those dominoes is the major banks, more bank failures. What happens when major banks fail? The money printer goes again, and that's liquidity into the markets. And uh, that's when we really start to see uh, things run. And actually, all you have to do is go to Brett Fogel, Google Brett Fogel Trading View. And I have an um, analysis I do periodically uh, here. And uh, I wouldn't you know it. Look at this one I did the other day. It was editor's pick. Holy cow, you guys, I got 350 likes on that one. Um, this is a, you might want to watch this. It's kind of a short version of what we talked about today, uh, a Bitcoin breakout or pullback zone. So 350 people like the idea. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, kudos to TradingView. Um, but what I was going to point to you guys here is, um, and I've done a number of updates on it. It's the path to 150K Bitcoin, this one here. So Bitcoin update on the path to the 10 factors. Now, if you guys have been with me for a while, it was seven factors a year ago, and then it became 10. And uh, and you can play, see how things play out. If This one's a video. But uh, number one, BlackRock, Fidelity, ETFs, we saw that happening. Number two, bank failures push money to Bitcoin. And we just saw Friday a bank failure. And then what happened um, yesterday, Joe sent this to me. Uh, that we've got a whole slew more bank failures, you guys. So this, I think, will lead to, here it is. This is in M3 Active Trader yesterday. Uh, it, so it says here, U.S. bank losses 
now 7x higher than during the 2008 crisis. We're going to have more bank failures, you guys, and I think that will see a flight to quality in the Bitcoin. And each one of these 10 factors, each acting as a small smoldering campfire, and if any one of them ignite, like sovereign wealth nations, I have that, I believe, is number six, country adoption of Bitcoin as reserve currency. Once we have uh, we have country FOMO and the start, they, everyone's starting to buy it for their country, like El Salvador. It's a huge success story. It's only a matter of time before more countries be, be, make it a strategic reserve currency. That's when the crypto industry, and some are now projecting it as, as a $100 trillion industry by 2035. That's 50x from here. Let's say we cut that in half. Let's say it only goes to $50 trillion. Let's say it only goes to 20 trillion. That's still, that's still um, total market caps around 2 trillion. That's still 10 times, 10X from here, everybody, on the loan. If it only did 10X, okay? Do the math in your head. So we're early, we're still early. And so, um, uh, thank you, Vade. Uh, if you were one of them that liked the, the video, I appreciate that. So, uh, okay, everybody, well, look, um, look, good news, we're, we're close. Uh, you know, there's some people still saying we go down and retest 40,000. I think th those those shorts have, have married to the idea and they have confirmation bias and they're about to get wiped out. And that resulting short squeeze is, is going to be fun. Just my opinion, not tradable advice. Do your own research, not financial advice. But based on everything else, else I'm seeing, I think we push higher, we just have a little more zigzag. And uh, once we have some certainty in the markets, uh, boom, it's uh, it's go time. Okay, everyone, uh, those of you in M3, I'll see you tomorrow. And uh, I have a few new members there, so that's awesome. And uh, so those of you in Retire Rich, I'll see you Thursday. Actually, I won't. I will be, Mike's taking Thursday's class. I'll be heading to sunny Florida and uh, for uh, some business and uh, maybe a little bit of fun. Okay, everyone, take care. I'll see you next week.